Today we're building an emu habitat in Naturalis in Planet 2. Yes, you heard that correctly. We're building in Planet 2 today. Let's go. All right, hope you guys are ready for it. Spoiler alert, you're not because I've been stockpiling rambly thoughts for close to or maybe even over one and a half months and it's all now going to unfold, which means it's not just buckle your sheet belts today. No, it's get full bulletproof gear. No, scratch that, actually. Get full bomb-proof gear. You know, the suits that make you look like a depressed Teletubby? Maybe that will save you from the chaotic rambling that is going to be this video. However, you might also want to have your therapist on standby. Not because that might save your brain from imploding or exploding, depending on what happens first. No, it's because when that happens, at least you'll have an audience. Anyways, let's start talking about the actual build, even though I'm for sure going to go off and ramble and go on a million tangents but when it comes to the build so today we're building a emu habitat which kind of fits well because chaotic video chaotic looney tunes animal and yes i did do some research on emus and i thought like oh yeah australia lost a war against emus so they must be pretty violent birds i mean cassowaries are pretty violent or can be pretty violent so i thought like oh yeah emus are pretty violent and they are, but not really like they can kick you, which can hurt. But they are most like when I look at an emu, I just think there's no thoughts behind those eyes. There's just a beep like emus just have like a beep whenever you try and make their thoughts audible. But yeah. Welcome to the emu habitat. This is a build that has been basically set in stone since January. And I don't mean like, oh, I knew that I was going to build this habitat. No, I knew exactly how I was going to build this habitat. Like the oval shape of the building for the emu habitat that we're building right now. Already knew that was going to be an oval shape. Kane mentioned to me, oh, you built two boobs because of the tau or the circular structures on each end of the oval and i can't disagree with that from above they kind of look like boobs but at least they're firm boobs so this is also the first time in the entire australian section and i'm going to call it the australian section because it's the more marketable term and it's naturalist they will go for whatever term or whatever name makes them more money because they want profit and they don't care about much else i mean they also allow a serial killer in the zoo after nightfall but hey at least it's a clean serial killer i forgot the name of the serial killer because it has been that long since the last planet zoo video but i do remember oh yeah we had a red panda mascot serial killer who if you are in naturalist after nightfall he butchers you but he's a neat, nice, clean serial killer because after he butchers you and like hacks your body to pieces, he at least dumps everything into a dumpster. And he gets like the mob to mop up all of the blood and such. So at least it's a nice, clean serial killer. Some people in real life might want to take notes of that. Not the killing part, but the clean part. Yeah, don't start killing stuff. That's poison advice 101. Don't become a serial killer. Anyways, so... All of this build was kind of set in stone for a long time. Like I knew the shape of the building. I kind of knew like, oh yeah, it's going to be in this area. It's going to have kind of this shape and just this vibe to it. But I just didn't feel like building in Planet Zoo. So then moved to Enshrouded and then there was Bell Rides and now there's also Mana Lords. So I am very happy that I get to play other games on the channel as well. Because sometimes it's just like, yeah, I don't really feel like playing Planet Zoo or building in Planet Zoo, but I do still want to build stuff. So now I get to do that in Enshrouded or Manor Lodge. I feel a sneeze coming, so just hang on. Alright, I'm back and yes, I do have the dad sneeze. However, I have had the dad sneeze since I was born. Like if I sneeze, it just... Car sirens and car alarms go off in the near vicinity because it's just like, what the fuck is that? But uh, yeah, I, also just another thing, I have recently gone through the hospital because of ear stuff. It's nothing serious, but it's like an ear infection that just hasn't gone away. So they sprayed my ears with stuff, and now it just constantly sounds like I'm in a squishy toy. Like, you know the rubbery squeeze sound? 
my ears are just constantly dead right now. So I have no idea if I sound correctly now because all I can hear is squeezy sounds, like the rubber squeezy sounds. Like whenever I open my mouth, so for this voice server that's going to be happening constantly, it's just like, what the fuck is going on in my ears right now? Anyways, talking again about the building itself. So again, yes, I went to the hospital. It's nothing serious, so don't worry about any of it. If I see anyone worrying in the comments, no, bad. However, if you scroll up a little bit, there's the like button. And likes means numbers, and numbers means algorithm happy, which means then that the algorithm monkey will send the video into something. Yeah, I have no idea how the algorithm works anymore. It's just like, yeah, somehow the likes and like the engagement and the numbers make m monkey happy. Yes, I'm saying algorithm monkey because I have no clue what it is now anymore. Could be an... Like, for all I know, it could just be a monkey that's just randomly pressing buttons. But for some reason, the numbers work with the monkey. I like the idea that it's just a monkey. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I really missed rambling here because it's just like the most random thoughts that sometimes come out. But anyway, so when it came to the actual building and the entire emu habitat, it was, as I said, set in stone for a long time already. But I just didn't feel like building, so then I moved to other games that get, were coming out around the same time. And I'm so happy with that. Because it's just like sometimes you want to build, but you don't want to build in Planet Zoo. And a lot of times it's like, oh yeah, I've been building in Planet Zoo, or now it's a Shrouded dirt and all the other games. Like sometimes you build too long in one game and then the inspiration just stops. Or the motivation just stops. And you kind of need to move to something else then for a little bit and then you can return and then you can just constantly switch things out. Speaking of switching things out, now we're moving on to the barriers. What's that for a transition from one subject to another? I feel happy. My ears are still squeegee. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually a word. I, I am very interested in what like the captions say because YouTube already has trouble understanding what I say with like the slight Dutch accent and such, but uh, we are managing. But when I say squeegee, I'm just very interested what YouTube thinks I'm saying. <laughs> but anyways, so now we're moving on to the barriers. I should also probably move on to a speech uh, therapist or teacher because I, for some reason, couldn't say move. I think it's getting worse. Not that I have a speech impediment, it's just that like my brain is hardwired for Dutch and so sometimes, especially with the speed of voiceovers, my brain is just like, slow down boys and I have no idea what, here are some random words uh, or some random noises. Anyways, moving on again, back to the barriers. So the emu habitat is right on the edge of Naturalis. Like, I don't know if there's actually going to be another habitat in between the emu habitat and the parking lot, but otherwise, this habitat is straight up next to the parking lot. So then, because there's also the highway through the Australian area right along this habitat, it could easily become a habitat where this one part that we're working on right now could be kind of a forgettable part. So because of that, I wanted to draw a little bit more attention to it. So I gave it this deck so that it feels like you're more in the actual habitat. You're not really, but it gives off that feeling that you're more in the habitat and not just on the edge of it. And it was really just fun to make because also I wanted to have like different like barriers. I never really used the barriers that are like in game. Like the fences that the game provides you. Because I always, I'm just like, yeah, it just doesn't work exactly for what I want. So let me spend a good hour and all thousands of pieces to make a barrier that I want. And then I also added onto the harbor area for the Australian section. Now you might think, what the fuck is he talking about with the harbor area? 
Well, if you've been looking at the cinematic shots and especially the overhead shots where I show the entirety of Naturalis from a point down, uh, what's the perspective for Gate God? From a bird's eye perspective, you could see that for the entirety of the like building in the Australian area, there was this one area at the entrance of the Australian section that was formed. It's right next to the blue penguin habitat and now next to the emu habitat. But there was always this area that was already kind of laid out, but was completely bare. Like there was nothing in there. And that's because I had a big idea because I wanted to build a steakhouse. I don't know why I immediately thought like, oh yeah, Australia. Steakhouse. But I wanted to build a restaurant there, but... Here's the thing, I want it to be kind of the last build of the Australian section, which does mean, yes, it's going to stay vacant for a lot longer. But I thought like, oh yeah, this would be like a nice close up of the Australian section when I finish it. And then I started tearing out habitats. Yeah, I have been like, I've been gone from Planet Zoo for I think close to one and a half months now. But in those one and a half months, I didn't stop playing Planet Zoo. The only thing is, I basically reverse played Planet Zoo because I started taking out a lot of habitats. So right now, the Snow Leopard habitat is gone, the Giant Panda habitat is gone, and the Kangaroo, well, the old Kangaroo habitat was gone for a long time. But yes, I've basically been taking away a lot of habitats. Also, the Red Panda habitat is gone, but that one wasn't finished. And here's the thing, when it comes to a build, if I don't finish it immediately when I'm building it, I will lose interest in it. And then I will just be like, oh yeah, that's out that. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it anymore. Better bulldoze it and start it over again. So yeah, that's basically what happened. But I'm really happy that I took out the giant panda habitat and the snow leopard habitat because I know that I can do better. And especially with the giant panda habitat, I actually want to push that away from like the Asian highlands area and make it part of the central area, like the starting area of Naturalis. And I don't know which animal I specifically want in it. It might be capybaras or llamas because... The central area is basically just like, yeah, this is where the North American and South American animals are. It's a mix of those, but it doesn't have a specific theming, so it's just a, just general modern vibes. Whereas with the Australian area, it's supposed to be like sort of beachy vibes. The Euro European area is just like cozy forest vibes. Asian highlands is modern mountain vibes. And then you have the... African area, which is then split up in African area and then the Oasis area, but it's all just like posh African savannah vibes. And then the Oasis is just posh Arabian vibes. So yeah, that's basically just how I sum up all of the different areas in Naturalis. It's not really like, oh yeah, it's this architecture style and this architecture style. It's more just getting the vibe across. Which I think also kind of helps with making it like a cohesive area if you're not tying it to one architectural style. It's to just have a general vibe and also of course a color scheme that goes throughout the entire area. So that's also a little bit on why the Australian area so far didn't have any thatch yet. Because I thought like, oh yeah, the thatch, that's something that I'm going to keep for... The European area, the Southeast Asian area, if I ever get to that, and the African area. So I thought like, oh yeah, I didn't want to touch here, but then I was just like, yeah, it works here. Like it still gives off the beach vibes that I want. And it's the same color scheme as the rest of the Australian area. So yeah, let's go for touch. And then I added the mulch roof on the oval section with the metal roof on the other side just so that every bit of the roof stands out in a way that's not screaming in your face, but that's still like, oh, noticeable. Like it's a, oh, kind of standing out and not a, ooh, kind of. <laughs> it, that makes perfect sense in my head, but probably for your guys, it's just like, 
I have no clue what Poison is talking about. Just smile and nod. Smile and nod. But anyways, so for this section also, I wanted to make staff entrances into the building for the emus. Because so far, there is an entrance for the emus themselves. But there wasn't an entrance for the staff. And yes, the staff could enter just through the entrance for the emus. But most likely they would have a separate entrance as, you know, for staff. Just so that, oh yeah, they can close it off to the emus if they ever like need to clean it. Or for any other reason they don't want the emus in there. And then they can just, you know, do that now. And then I also made a separate section from the rest of the habitat at the entrance to the habitat. Just so that like if they come in with food or something and they just want to be in the habitat but not be surrounded by the emus, they can do that. So that's pretty much it when it comes to like the barriers and such. Now originally this is was or was going to have four emus. However, fun thing about this habitat by the end of it, for four emus, they lacked two square meters of space. I am not joking. That's exactly how much space they still needed for the bar of like uh, the traversable area to be in green. And I am a very simple man. If bar is in green, me happy. If bar is in orange, me not happy. So yeah, I booted out one emu and it kind of makes sense. It's a small habitat, which is kind of funny because the smallest animal in the Australian section has the largest habitat. I am talking about the little blue penguin. It has the largest habitat, even though right next door, there's the alligator or the crocodile. I have no idea anymore which one of the two it is. I think it's the saltwater crocodile that's there. It's been so long since I played the Planet Zoo. Like, for real, went through Naturalis and, like, looked at everything. And so, yeah, the, the saltwater crocodile has a smaller habitat than the little blue penguin. Even though the little blue penguin is, as the name replies already, it's the tiniest animal in the Australian section. But it has the largest habitat. Anyways, moving on to the next point, which is, I would say, even more pointed which is the accessibility, because as I said, there's this highway through the Australian area. Now there is a ramp up to it, but I feel like that ramp actually isn't up to code when it comes to the angle of it. So that if you're in a wheelchair, you can't actually get up to it or it's going to be very difficult to get up. So that means, oh yeah, we need elevators or we need a proper ramp so that anyone with limited mobility can get up there because my goal is now or has been for a long time to make sure that as much of naturalis is accessible for everyone no matter if you are in a wheelchair or you're on crutches or are in any other way suffering from limited mobility that also means like the elderly of course because yes sometimes there will i mean sometimes you know, if grandma wants to take the grandkids to Naturalis, but grandma is suffering from something, which means that she isn't able to use stairs as effectively, or like there's just some reason that she, she would rather use like a ramp or an elevator, that that is a possible route to go to when it comes to Naturalis. So building the elevator itself was pretty easy. There's a little bit of like a thing where the corners aren't aligned perfectly, which is always annoying me and it's going to be annoying me. But then I realized, yeah, it doesn't need to be completely perfect. It doesn't need to be completely all the way aligned because I don't think any one of you guys, if I ever put Naturalis on the workshop, is going to go through Naturalis with the ruler and look at like, oh no, but this beam is like one millimeter of alignment. Yeah. Anyways, I also, I decided for a little bit of a different look when it came to the elevator, because usually I had the like sliding doors 
here you have a door that you can open with a handle but also for people in like a wheelchair or for people who just for whatever reason it's difficult for them to use then the handle because of course thinking of it maybe this isn't the logical way to think of it or the good way to think about it and please if i ever say anything when it comes to accessibility and mobility and it's wrong please do point it out because i don't know this stuff so i'm going to just immediately right off the bat say if i say anything wrong it is because of ignorance and i do love to then be educated on it so if there's anything that's wrong about what i say when it comes to accessibility and mobility please do point it out but like for somebody in a wheelchair the handle might be a little bit annoying or frustrating because you have to pull the handle and then also ride your wheelchair back like there, there might be a lot of other reasons as well for having the door be like a pull door with a handle might be a little bit frustrating or di more difficult so i did actually make it so that there's also like a sensor like you have these three pretty much i think every doctor's office and like well pretty much a lot of places where like if you get close to the door it automatically opens so you can see that maybe right now maybe this voiceover is a little bit out of sync but i did add a little bit of a box on the inside of the door that's supposed to kind of mimic that automatic open door system i don't know what it's actually called but yeah there's basically just like a sensor probably somewhere in the door or in the floor in front of it and if you get there the door automatically opens now i did also and i didn't record this but i did add a little bit of like a sort of system outside because i don't want people who don't really need the elevator to start using it i'm thinking of the karens who are just tired and don't want to walk up the stairs or such but like the people who don't need to use this i want to sort of decentivize them from trying to use it so outside of the elevator there's actually like a system where if you are in need of the the elevator you can get like a pass at the gate to naturalis like the entrance of naturalis and then when you get to these elevators you you just scan your pass and that sort of activates the elevator so that karen who is just a little bit tired but can walk perfectly fine isn't going to take the me or measures is not the right word but like isn't going to take away the much needed equipment it's, it's also not the right word but like just making sure that a carrot or somebody who doesn't need to use this isn't going to use it or decentifies it and then there's also another section which also in a way relates to accessibility but here is the connection point from one of the side roads this is one of the side roads that i talked about earlier with the deck but these roads also of course connect into the highway through the australian section i call it the highway just because it's like a main road elevated that goes through the entirety of the australian section but it does tie into the side roads with the highway if anyone can still follow this kudos to you i will probably look back at this voiceover or listen this back and uh, i will have no clue what i'm saying this mo happens most often like sometimes people point something out in the comments of like oh yeah you talked about this and then i'm like did i like my memory is the size of a goldfish actually probably smaller but when it comes to what we're building right now it's basically this connection point from the side roads into the highway however as you can see the highway is a bit higher than the side roads which means oh i could make an elevator here but it's really too small of a height gap to bridge with an elevator actually the original elevator i thought it would be much taller but it's not i think the highway is actually at most two meters high maybe or maybe even one meter high from the side roads 
well for the elevator it was two meters with this side road i think it was one meter or maybe not even that so then i decided all right let's make this connection point nicely rounded kind of like how i made it already with the kangaroo habitat although i want to remove that excuse me remove that connection point and transform it to look similar to this one because i like this design a lot more but i made it rounded and then i added a ramp because with this high difference it actually makes a lot more sense to have a ramp instead of an elevator and i also like just having more ramps because elevators can break down and then potentially a huge part of naturalis is then not going to be accessible anymore so i do want to have as many ramps as possible as well because unlike unless there's like an earthquake or a meteor strike on the ramp a ramps are usually or almost always accessible whereas an elevator can break down a ramp that needs like if you can break down a ramp i'm weirdly impressed if you can but yeah so i basically wanted to add a ramp and then to add a little bit more of a design because i didn't want this to just be like oh yeah this is just a connect sport i actually wanted this to be a little bit nice so i added the design which basically is a giant needle and then from that needle like multiple threads come off to sort of hold up this connection point even though saying connection point sounds a little bit weird but i don't know of any other way to say it now when it came to the entire building of this build it actually went pretty fast yes there were large gaps in between building but when i was building it actually went pretty fast which surprised me again i did know oh i'm going to build this this and this and this but i sometimes well sometimes i most of the time have like a very short attention span this is why i'm watching a lot of vods or like streams but i i watch them back i am almost never watching live streams anymore i'm just like oh yeah i see this live stream yeah i'm going to wait i'm going to sort of put this in the back of my mind and then i will watch it back later while i'm building because i need that like noise in the background and i've kind of put it down towards i have two squirrels in my brain one that wants to build and that's like really perfectionistic and like wants to do stuff and then there's the other squirrel in my brain that's just like but we could do this and then it's just like oh yeah that live stream or that vault that i'm watching kind of keeps that chaotic squirrel in line and it's like oh nice pictures or nice just sounds and then the other squirrel can work on stuff and yes i do know that people are probably going to mention like oh that sounds like adhd i am not refuting that <laughs> because i don't think i can but hey this works for me so should i get an official diagnosis nah, i don't think it's going to change that much like it's not like that severe that like things don't happen if i don't want to it's just like oh yeah things happen easier when i know like oh i need to just put something in the background while i'm doing stuff because then chaos squirrel gets occupied however when it comes to these voiceovers it's chaos squirrel that you're hearing because it's just like this 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 and this how is that brain melt going or brain imploding by this point your brain should probably have imploded your therapist is probably you know very worried if they are on standby but you should have pushed the like and subscribe button. I think this is the third time that I say this because, again, Squirrel uh, doesn't remember anything. So I definitely have said things in videos like three, four times <laughs> and just completely forgot about it. This is how bad my short term memory sometimes is. Well, especially when it comes to these voiceovers. It's just like, yeah, let's not think about it too much because then squirrel gets frustrated but yeah don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button because that means numbers which means happy algorithm monkey which means video gets pushed into the algorithm which makes poison happy yeah also don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more anyways 
back to the actual build so this is like the needle with the threads coming off of it just to give it a little bit more of like a design vibe and also i decided all right these threads well they're basically just beams but they kind of look like threads but these threads i first thought like oh let's make them like more realistic because if this thing is holding up this entire connection point they would be a lot thicker but then i realized this entire connection point is first of all supported by the highway and the other it's like yeah it's sitting on the needle mostly like the threads are probably more for decoration beyond anything else so then i decided all right it's going to look a lot better with like thinner threads or thinner beams so i changed that up and i was like if you look at it from like the start of the highway you're not looking at this connection point, you're looking at what's behind it, which is the kangaroo habitat, which is a much more interesting thing. And this is also a thing when it comes to building for naturalis. I want you to always just look at the horizon or look in the distance and just constantly be like, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? Like, I constantly want to have like something around the corner is the vibe of just like, oh, you're never finished exploring naturalis there's always something behind the corner and no i don't mean oh yeah what's behind the corner is a staff area if you see a staff area behind the corner uh, that's not supposed to uh well it's supposed to be visible but you're not supposed to go in there i'm looking at you goro yes anyways now we're finally moving on to the actual habitat itself with a lot of rocks not so much grass this time though although when it comes to the australian area there's not a lot of grass anyway because it kind of works with just the entire vibe like take a sh no, no don't take a shot whenever i say oh the vibe because you will become an alcoholic by the end of this video if you survive the alcohol poisoning that is yeah it's just it's just the aesthetic of the australian areas to kind of just have like grassy patches and then of course mind the paths that the emus or just the animals in general are going to take because it's like oh yeah there's going to be a path from the building or the sleeping area towards where their food is where their water is and then there's the, of course their toys which they are also going to go towards so if you're building in plant zoo and you want to make it realistic do keep in mind the paths that the animals will take which are usually like the most straightforward paths along those paths there will most likely not be as many plants any grass will either trampled or will get eaten and on the other places where it wouldn't walk there you can have more grass you can have more foliage and such and i usually like for the grass to sort of blend into the paths so i will sink it in deeper closer to the pots just so that it looks like oh yeah the grass is trying to grow there but it's getting trampled or eaten before it can fully grow because grass uh yeah grass is a, a strong plan grass is also weird if you really think about it like we constantly decapitate it by mowing and it keeps growing back meanwhile if i put my flowers away well not even away if I, like i've four potted plants right now like if i move on slightly it's just like yeah peace out i'm dead meanwhile grass we are decapitating constantly and we're just like yeah it will grow back eventually and then two weeks later it's fully back like grass is weird if you really think about it just like constantly being murdered but anyways back to the actual build and not to the grass decapitation anyways if you've been watching to this point Put grass decap- well not grass de decapitation because YouTube is probably not going to be happy about that. Just put grass in the comments. Then I will know that you've watched to this point so far. But anyways, also when it came to just like the plants, uh, especially along the edges the and the areas where the animals can't go, that's where I usually put the bushes. Like the grass is just everywhere the animals don't walk and then the foe more like the bushes and the trees are the areas where the animals really don't get to because especially with herbivores they will otherwise just eat all of it so i usually don't want to have like you have those cages around trees so that the animals don't like eat the leaves or don't scratch at the trees i usually don't want to do that well except for like elephants and such because those would just 
tear down a tree. But in the case of like emus, I don't think the like barriers along the trees are that necessary. However, if I'm wrong, do please point it out to me because uh, when it comes to Planet Zoo, I'm most likely of all of the content creators, I'm the least knowledgeable about the actual animals. I just like building stuff. A lot of building stuff because this is supposed to be a tiny build. So put this build along the pile of poison doesn't know how to build tiny stuff. However, I still consider this build a tiny build because the habitat is small. Even though the build itself is long. However, this video was supposed to be a lot longer. Well, not supposed to be. It was wrongly a lot longer because I thought like, oh yeah, this is going to be 40 minutes. I wrongly put like the clips of the elevator twice. So that added like five or 10 minutes to this video. And then I saw that it doing a previous iteration of this voiceover because I do sometimes take multiple takes. And, but yeah, this video ended up being a bit shorter because Poison saw that he was a dumbass or editing Poison saw that he was a dumbass. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button because it does help out a lot when it comes to the algorithm. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. And then there's also channel memberships if you want emotes as such. Anyways, have a wonderful day, guys. Bye-bye.